Right, thank you very much, and thank you very much for the kind introduction, and I am honored to be here uh, as a speaker for the uh, LC 2019 annual, annual meeting. I'm Hiroshi Sai from the University of Tokyo. Uh, the, uh, before stating my presentation, um, my our waist circumference is 31 inches, so that's okay. <laughs> so we have to receive our, our mandatory health checkups every year, but that, that kind of mandatory health checkups uh, is the age of 40, so I'm now 36, so I have not received that one. <laughs> So uh, my title is Accuracy of Available Devices for Estimating Total Energy Expenditure. And we uh, use the two sophisticated methods of measuring physical uh, total energy expenditure. Uh, one is the metabolic chamber, and the another is the W level water uh, method that uh, was mentioned by the, uh, the, the prior speaker. So uh, the, I'm now in the University of Tokyo, but uh, the most of the uh, experiment and, 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 and measurements were uh, conducted at the National Institute of Biomedical Innovation and, and Health and Nutrition, so which is another institution. So here it is. So this is disclosure. I have no competing in, uh, conflict, COIs, conflict, uh, conflict of interest on any aspect of these studies. And basically, this study was uh, funded by the uh, our AMED, uh, which is Japan Agency for Medical Research and Development, uh, which is a government-based uh, uh, research funding. So uh, they do not have any uh, role uh, in the design and conduct of the studies and anything. So, uh, uh, so I do not have uh, uh, any conflict of interest on this study. So uh, uh, I think uh, I'm an exercise physiologist and ac exercise and physical activity epidemiologist. So I, I'm very familiar with the energy expenditure, but some of you guys are not uh, 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 not familiar with it, uh, so let me uh, uh, explain a little bit about the total energy expenditure, or energy expenditure itself. So uh, here is the composition of energy expenditure. Uh, this is the total energy expenditures, and I think if you're a female, you uh, expend about like 2,000 kcal per day of energy, and if you're a male, you may have uh, 2,500 kcal per day of uh, energy expenditures. So uh, 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 from out of the total energy expenditures, 60% uh, of, of the energy expended as a basal metabolic rate, and 10% uh, uh, comes from the dietary induced thermogenesis or, or thermic effect of food, and the other are 30% uh, are, are, are basically the physical activity energy expenditure. So energy expenditure are, are due to physical activity, exercise, and lifestyle uh, activity than anything. So uh, 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 obviously, the ac accurate estimation of energy expenditure is a key, uh, uh, a very important key uh, uh, in det determining the, uh, the relationship uh, between um, and human behavior and, and health. So for example, the total energy expenditures is associated with the uh, lower mortality and uh, lower risk of uh, cardiovascular disease and uh, dementia and other uh, type of uh, diabetes as well. So that's why uh, uh, the uh, accurate measurement of energy expenditures will be very important. So, uh, but uh, energy expenditure measurement is actually very uh, uh, difficult uh, and sometimes it's very costly. So uh, now, uh, wearable devices are, are, are emerging and, and are becoming more popular. So as you see on this size and on this figure, uh, here is the uh, ship, uh, shipments of the wearable devices uh, from 2017 to uh, 2021. That's the, uh, you know, of course, uh, estimation. But uh, the, the shipments uh, is actually uh, increasing uh, constantly. But uh, this is the uh, ASP, so average sales price. So price of the device is uh, going up around here in 2019, but it is uh, going, will, will be going down uh, uh, to uh, uh, around 120 uh, US dollars or so. So uh, uh, I guess the most dominant uh, the wearable device uh, for a fitness tracker uh, in the US is Fitbit. But in a world, uh, I think Xiaomi uh, is now the dominant uh, wearable tracker. And Xiaomi is very, uh, it's a China-based available devices and it's very uh, uh, affordable, maybe like 30 or 40 uh, US dollars. So uh, 
So now, now the, the cost of the wearable is now uh, decreasing. But uh, so there's so many wearable devices in the world, and, and of course in Akihabara in Japan, it is a very famous uh, city for the electrical appliances. But um, most of the, the wearable devices, uh, especially in the consumer models, are, are not are tested uh, scientifically. So that's why we uh, plan our, to examine the validity of the total energy expenditure uh, estimated by the several uh, wearable devices uh, compared with gold standard measurements. So uh, in our study, uh, we adapted two gold standard measurement uh, masses. One is the uh, metabolic chamber. The other is the w labeled waters. The, uh, uh, the former uh, uh, method, metabolic chamber, is uh, a method of, of me uh, 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 measuring the energy expenditure in our, our standardized uh, room. So just for a day or so. But for the W level waters, uh, can measure the energy expenditure over two weeks or so in a free living. So that's a very important point. So this is uh, standardized and uh, in the lab, but uh, this is the free living. So, uh, uh, so here is the participants. And, and uh, basically, we recruited the participant conveniently around the, our, our, our staff. And, and a convenient sampling. So uh, that's our, our, our one of the limitations. And, and we recruited 19 uh, healthy adults, uh, nine men and 10 women. And they were aged uh, 21 to uh, 50 years and normal weight, and uh, are st stable and normal weight, and uh, which is BMI of 18.5 to 25 uh, kg per uh, meter squared of BMI. So uh, as you may know, the, uh, the the, the cap point, BMI cap point for obesity in Japan is a little bit uh, uh, you know, strict. Uh, that is 25. And uh, instead of 30 uh, in uh, uh, North American countries and others. So because the Japanese, uh, uh, in, uh, Japanese people or other uh, Asian countries, uh, Asian people are, are more likely to develop the uh, chronic diseases at the, at the middle level of obesity. So that's why we, or uh, the society in Japan, uh, uh, decided to use the 25 of BMI as a cut point for the, B, uh, for the obesity. So uh, they do not have any uh, uh, problems in performing regular physical, uh, regular daily activities and no chronic disease that may affect the uh, uh, metabolism and physical activity. So uh, of course, this study was uh, approved uh, by the IRB of the National Institutes of Health in Japan. And we obtained uh, informed consent, and 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 the participants were uh, basically compensated for uh, their participation. So uh, these are wearable devices that we uh, tested. Uh, in total, we used the 12 wearable devices. 12. So uh, here is the uh, 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 list, and uh, you see here these are all wrist-based uh, wearable devices. Uh, you may know the Fitbit, Jawbone, Misfit. Epson, this is Japanese-based, and Garmin, um, and the blue one are uh, Withings, and Omron, Panasonic, and Cans, and Actigraph. These are all attached on waist, so waist-based. So uh, we, and also we have uh, two more uh, uh, monitors, Tanita and Omron Curry Scan. Uh, they are measured in a pocket. So. Uh, in addition, uh, uh, so basically, the so these four monitors are uh, research grade. So uh, these monitors are tested and uh, 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 tested for use in research. So these three are Japanese-based uh, research grade monitors: Omron, Panasonic, and Ken's. And here is the Actigraph. Uh, as you may know, this is uh, the most uh, uh, popular, famous uh, research grade activity monitored in the US. And this is, uh, is actually adapted by the uh, NHANES. So I think there were two cycles in 2003, 2003 to 2006, and uh, 2011 to 2014 cycles, they used the, uh, our, our, the ActiGraph for, uh, for activity monitoring in NHANES. So, and so these are, are basically our consumer devices were, uh, were selected according to the Japanese sales rankings. So we searched Amazon and, and other 
comparison sites, it's called kakaku.com, uh, comparison sites, and we selected all the uh, our, our consumer models. So, our, so here's a picture of our participants. They uh, <laughs> wore lots of uh, waste-based <laughs> uh, monitors and risk-based monitors and, and two uh, other uh, monitors in, uh, which will be uh, 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 wear in a pocket. So uh, he's a principal investigator, actually. <laughs> OK, so let me explain a little bit about metabolic chamber, or uh, human calorie meter. And uh, this is the basic structure of the calorie meter. And uh, these are pictures uh, of uh, metabolic chamber. So as I was, uh, so, so this is the picture of the, actually the metabolic chamber at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, USA while I was uh, uh, working as a postdoc there. So uh, the chamber uh, is like a hotel room, just a box, but uh, equipped with some uh, analyzers, like a CO2, carbon dioxide, and uh, oxygen analyzers. So uh, actually a participant stay there, stayed in a room for 24 hours or more, uh, sometimes two days or more, and, and stay there, and of course, uh, they have expired gas. So uh, the, uh, this equipment draw uh, their expired gas from the uh, 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 room and then measure our, our CO2 and O2, carbon dioxide and O2. And also they measure uh, the uh, carbon dioxide and, and, and oxygen concentration from the fresh air. And then we can, you know, uh, get the difference between the two. So that means the uh, carbon dioxide production and oxygen consumption. So from that data, we can measure uh, uh, energy expenditure. So uh, this is very accurate, but uh, the, the good thing is, is accuracy, but uh, the bad thing is that the limited activity. Of course, they have to stay there uh, for uh, extended time. So this is the basic structure uh, of the metabolic chamber. And, and this is the, uh, our protocol for the metabolic chamber. So basically, participants visited in the morning and after the overnight fast. And after wearing all devices and mobile devices, uh, they entered the chamber at 9 AM and then stay there for 24 hours and get out at uh, 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 9 AM the following day. And then they completed 24 hour uh, in direct hurry under standardized protocol, uh, simulating the daily activities, daily normal uh, activities. So which included three meals. Unfortunately, that's a standardized. This is not a buffet meals like a, a morning <laughs> this morning. So and desk work, watching TV and housework and treadmill walking and sleeping. So uh, this is the details of the standardized uh, protocol uh, in a chamber. So very detailed and very packed and very busy. <laughs> but uh, so uh, entered uh, uh, around 8, 8.45 and, and stood with TV watching and had a breakfast and computer work, reading work, and folding laundry and cleaning. These two activities that are mimicking like a, a daily acti normal activity outside of the chamber and uh, some exercise and, and TV again, and lunch, computer, TV, desk, desk work, and cleaning, and exercise again, and TV, dinner, and computer work, reading book, uh, desk work, computer, TV, <laughs> TV, so many TVs, but uh, <laughs> uh, forking, uh, folding the laundry and, and go to bed. <laughs> and <clears throat> of course, during the chamber, we measured the uh, uh, basal metabolic rate uh, in a supine position. So that's the details. So uh, let me explain a little bit about uh, 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 W-labeled water. So I, unfortunately, I'm, a I'm not a physicist. I'm not a chemist, uh, so exercise scientist. I'm not uh, familiar uh, with these areas. But uh, uh, as you may know, there are, we have our protein and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the hydrogen and the oxygen in our uh, natural environment. So, uh, uh, so uh, one proton and zero neutron uh, is the uh, normal form in our, our natural environments that constitute 99.98% in our, our natural environment. So uh, oxygen, 
uh, six stains existed in 99.7% uh, uh, in the natural environments. But the other isotope, other form of our, our atoms are are uh, existed in our, 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 our environment. Uh, so this uh, hydrogen has a uh, uh, neutron there, uh, uh, and that uh, exists in, in 0.015%. And, and oxygen 18, so they have 18 uh, uh, neutron there, uh, uh, that uh, constitute 0.2% in natural environments. But uh, these two are very uh, tiny percentage in our, our natural environment, so we can, you know, uh, produce industrially these two are, are, uh, isotopes. So they are uh, stable, so not radioactive. So, uh, so the the finally we we're going to measure uh, the uh, the water uh, by mixing the uh, uh, water itself and the stable isotope. And, but it's very uh, safe, completely safe. Uh, sometimes we measure the uh, energy expenditure of baby or pregnant women, so that can be applicable uh, to those uh, uh, any people. So even other uh, investigators in zoology, uh, they measure the uh, uh, energy expenditure of the bird and <laughs> other animal, mammalians, and anything. So that's uh, uh, pretty much a great uh, method to measure the ex uh, energy expenditure. But uh, uh, actually, production cost of, of oxygen 18 is very costly. Uh, so that's why this water, uh, we, we make about 100 milliliters of water for uh, the measuring the physical activity, uh, total energy expenditures. But the cost of the water is about 200 to $300 per cup. <laughs> so that's uh, very, very expensive water. <laughs> So, uh, so this is the uh, 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 basic mechanism of, of the W level waters. Uh, so here is a human, and and so if you are, are, are consume our aggressive uh, DLWs, then of course the isotope, a stable isotope, uh, expand our uh, gradually uh, to your uh, uh, your body, and then uh, so the uh, stable isotope concentration will go up to the maximums for about an hour, and after that, so uh, uh, by uh, uh, you know, maintaining a da daily life, we have our some expired gas, of course, and urine and, 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 and vapor and a sweat. So uh, vapor and sweat and urine, they are uh, mainly uh, water, right? So, uh, so that's why they have uh, uh, hydrogen and oxygen oxygen and urine and sweat. But expired gas, they have uh, carbon dioxide, so that contains just oxygen. So no hydrogen there. So by measuring the difference between the two, so, uh, so as you see here, the oxygen contains uh, both an expired gas and, and urine and water. So the uh, oxygen 18 will uh, 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 you know, decline rapidly as compared to the hydrogen. So that's why by uh, 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 getting the difference between the two, we can estimate our, our carbon dioxide production. And after that, uh, uh, we can estimate the oxygen consumption by using the food quotient or a respiratory quotient. And by using the oxygen consumption, we can measure the energy expenditure during our, our the two weeks or so. So this method is, is actually developed and, and established by the, uh, Dr. Dade Scholler uh, at the University of uh, Wisconsin-Madison. And uh, this is a great uh, method, but uh, important thing is very costly. So uh, water is costly, and, and of course, analyzing uh, uh, is of course uh, pri uh, uh, pricey as well. So uh, this is actual uh, W level water protocol for studies, and, and uh, DLW dosing uh, was performed in the lab after collection of baseline urine sample, and a participant collected urine in airtight containers like this uh, for um, eight days, uh, spread over a 15-day uh, uh, free living period, and then they uh, wore the uh, all 12 devices, uh, aerobic devices during all waking hours and five risk devices were on while sleeping as well. 
And after 15 days, and urine samples and devices were recovered to measure the physical uh, total energy expenditure during 15 free living days. So uh, uh, the DLW is a very nice method, but uh, the, the bad thing is costly, and as well as the, uh, 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 the limited information. So we know the total amount, so we know the total energy expenditures, but as you know, uh, we don't know the content, so we do not have any information, uh, something like uh, activity or sleeping and any other uh, behaviors uh, from the uh, DLW uh, uh, measurements. So we just know the total energy expenditures. So that's uh, 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 important. So I actually uh, uh, prepared just two slides on uh, results. So one, this is the first one. So this is a comparison of a total, total energy expenditure between uh, devices and, and chamba uh, 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 energy expenditure in a standardized day, so one day, okay? So this is uh, uh, zero, so this means the, uh, 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 the estimate from our estimate in total energy expenditure estimate between device and chambers are completely identical, so that's a zero. And uh, this is the correlation. So, uh, and as you see, here is the list of uh, devices. And our, our blue one, uh, that was uh, a war on waste. And red one is wrist. And green one is po in the pockets. So uh, our orange box uh, means the research grade models. The other eight models are consumer based. So as you see, uh, some of the uh, research grade models are, are very good uh, uh, in terms of the absolute values. And, but the other consumer uh, models, uh, the, uh, some of the consumer models also had a good uh, estimate, uh, like Epson and Tanita. Uh, and one uh, research grade model is that Omron had uh, 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 overestimated the total energy expenditures. So, uh, but uh, as you see on the correlation, uh, the most of the monitors produce a very good uh, 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 correlation coefficients, uh, greater than 0.7, uh, this is the lowest 0.7, but mostly five, uh, eight, four, eight, five, and even 0.9. The reason of that, one of the reasons of that is the uh, total energy expenditure can be uh, relatively uh, uh, estimated by the basal metabolic rate and, and DIT, which is actually 10%, uh, uh, about 10% of the total energy expenditures. So uh, if we uh, compare the uh, physical activity energy expenditure, probably the uh, uh, correlation will be uh, lower, way lower. So uh, the other is most important data. Uh, this is the comparison between uh, in, uh, in total energy expenditure between device and doubly level water. So uh, this is the average value of uh, two weeks, so 15 days. So uh, the, here is the zero, and this is devices, and uh, these are uh, research grade models. As you see, most of the devices uh, underestimated the to total energy expenditure against the DLW during under, uh, uh, under free living conditions. So uh, that's um, uh, interesting. Uh, this is okay, this is standardized uh, in the lab. Uh, this is free living. And, and most of the uh, de uh, devices underestimated. But uh, a correlation between the two is are, 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 uh, generally high, uh, point A or higher. So that's a good thing. But uh, again, the reason, one of the reasons is that uh, the uh, total energy expenditure can be estimated largely by the basal metabolic rate, which is uh, uh, calculated from the uh, anthropometry and, and age and, and gender. So, uh, 
Let me summarize the primary findings. So the wearable device is successfully ranked uh, between individual variances in total energy expenditures, uh, mostly 0.7 of rank correlations or higher. And, but absolute values differed widely among uh, devices and, and varied significantly from the gold standard uh, uh, measures. And uh, interestingly, research-grade devices were not necessarily superior to uh, consumer-level devices. Some of the consumer uh, models performed well. And, and all wearable devices underestimated the total energy expenditure uh, uh, under free living conditions. So uh, these are a few discussions. Uh, the large reliance may be associated with epoch lengths uh, uh, and posture detection. So epoch means the uh, our, our time or uh, time frame of the measurements uh, of our data. So it means like a minute by minute data or every 10 seconds data or something. So our, uh, each device has a different epoch length uh, depending on their, uh, our, their standards. So uh, that's why uh, that may uh, produce the uh, large reliance in validity. And uh, some of the devices had a poster detection uh, functions uh, that are kind of features may affect the uh, reliance. And underestimation might be uh, due to periods of not wearing the device during basing and battery charge. So the some of the wearable devices does not last long. So some of the, the devices uh, we need uh, like a uh, battery charge every two days or three days or something. So during that time, of course, participants cannot wear the devices. So that may uh, uh, is not, that may be associated with the underestimation of the uh, energy expenditure. And so this is just a limitation. Uh, we have uh, tons of limitation. As you uh, uh, imagine, we have a uh, limited sample size and on the non obese uh, healthy Japanese and are uh, uh, recruited conveniently. So uh, key takeaways, uh, these are uh, just a repeat of the key findings, uh, but uh, wearable devices may be good as a ranking as a ranking tools and possibly used for logic scale cohort and ep ep epidemiological studies and surveys. But we should be cautious about uh, interpreting the absolute values in total energy expenditure. And some of the consumer models uh, may be nearly equivalent or uh, even sometimes perform well uh, in terms of total energy expenditure estimations. And it is apparent that wearable devices underestimated total energy expenditure uh, under free viewing conditions. All right, so uh, these are key references. Uh, the, the most of the uh, content of my uh, our talk is based on uh, the studies. Uh, this was uh, uh, published in JAMA Internal Medicine uh, two years ago, or uh, three years ago. So uh, this is other uh, uh, studies uh, from my own. So let me acknowledge all those folks, uh, especially uh, Dr. Miyachi. He's uh, our, our principal investigator of the entire project at the Japanese NIH. All right, that's it. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.